Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you imagine being ostracized by your own community or your own world, that you were not even allowed to, to live amongst your neighbors or amongst your friends or amongst your family? The lepers in this morning's gospel reading, as we hear, shouted out to Jesus because they suffered from this terrible terrible disease that left them separated from everyone around them. So they were forced to shout out to him and they raised their voices and said, Jesus master have mercy on us. And when he saw them he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. This act of faith that many of us take for granted, this act of faith of calling upon God for help, this act of faith which heals that separation that each and every one of us has. Because my brothers and sisters in Christ, the leprosy that these people suffered from is not strange to us. Because each and every one of us suffer from some form of spiritual leprosy. Something that separates us from one another something that separates us from God. And that which it is, is sin. Because sin itself is so divisive. It's, it has the ability to separate brothers and sisters, mothers from their children, husbands from their wives, friends from one another. But ultimately, it ha sin has the power to separate you from God. And that's precisely what happens to all of us, in the, even in the world that we live today. Our spiritual leprosy d disables us to the point where there are times where we become so complacent with what is happening in our society, with what is happening in our lives. We might go along living our lives as if there's nothing wrong, and we wait until something traumatic or horrific happens as sort of a wake-up call, if you will. A spiritual wake-up call that forces us to lift our voice up to God just as these lepers did. This gospel lesson is so full of metaphors and so rich in spiritual meaning and can teach us so many things. As it as the lesson continues, it says that one of the ten turned back to give thanks to God. Can you imagine receiving a gift and not saying thank you? And that is something physical. Some, something physical of this world. These people received, were restored. These people were restored to their communities. Their life was given back to them, and only one said thank you. And which one? Which one? A Samaritan of all. A Samaritan was considered to be an unclean person, according to the Jews. If a Jew was even touched by a Samaritan, he was considered unclean. So this gospel lesson points to the fact that even someone who wasn't Jewish, who was a stranger, was able to recognize the beautiful gift of restoration that he was given. Those other nine people represent all of us who are complacent, who go along through life and don't realize who we need to thank each and every day. Not when things are going bad, but when things are going good as well. And finally, the last line of this gospel lesson, Christ tells him to rise, go your way, your faith has made you well. This is a powerful statement because each and every one of us has the ability to express our faith. We have the ability to show our thanks to God. 
We have our ability to ask God for those things that we need. Do not be complacent. Do not go through life thinking that there's no need to give thanks to God. As we can see, our society offers us things, but often those things are very temporary. Just look at the economic condition of our country today. Would any of us have even dreamed, maybe 10 years ago, that we would find ourselves where we are today? And yet, during those prosperous years, during those good years, we lived our lives as if we had nothing to be thankful for. But this, it too, is a wake-up call. It is a wake-up call that we must give thanks to God each and every day. That when we are given that gift, whether it be something as great as in the gospel lesson, or the gift of being able to wake up in the morning and being with your family, we must be thankful. We must be thankful and be able to recognize all the blessings that are given to us. No matter how small or insignificant they may seem, they truly are blessings in our life. Look around you. We know there are people who are less fortunate than everybody in this church this morning. We can find you less fortunate people. And yet, how far are we away from that condition? How far are we away from separating ourselves from God, from separating ourselves from our family? Whether it be an economic condition, a sickness, or something else horrific that may happen. That's why it is important to be like that one leper who was healed, like that Samaritan, that outsider who was cleansed, who was restored through the love of God, through the love of Christ, because he raised his voice and he gave thanks to God and he was made well and restored to his community. This gospel lesson may it be, if you will, a reminder to each and every one of us this morning that it is an opportunity for us to re-examine our lives, to see the blessings that perhaps we took for granted, to see the blessings around us, and to give thanks to the Lord.